guys, it's Nerds of the West, and today we were playing Orem at four players. With me today, I have a Jimmy, Hello. a Callum, Howdy. a Tom, I and like gold. Tom, what was this game about? So this is a trick-taking game where you are specifically not allowed to follow suit. You have to play a card that is a different color to everyone that has already played at the table. The highest card will win and the lowest card will get gold. Gold is the trump suit, but gold is also worth points. Um, the lowest cards are worth the least amount of points and the highest cards are worth more points. The, uh, the person who gets the gold also gets to go first. So there is a lot of consideration because you're also bidding on how many tricks you think you are going to win at the start of a round based on the cards you see in your hand. If you get exactly your bid, you will get double that many points. I.e. if you bid five, you will get 10 points. If you go over, you will get five points. You will get what you bid. You are also able to change your bid later on with the gold cards that you acquire throughout the game. So a lot of choices, a lot of strategy. Today we're talking about, as Beck said, the difference between three and four players because we've already done a review of this at three players. We do a playthrough, a how to play and a review live twitch.tv slash nerds of the West. Guys, I just want to know your base game thoughts first. Not comparing it, not putting it on the board just yet. How do you feel about this game? It was fun, but I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to play the same color as what's already played. So, you know, uh, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It's not because the game is bad, it's because I am bad. Um, and even then, it's arguably not bad. It's just there's that one extra facet yeah. that it's like you're too busy thinking of the number yeah. that when it comes to color, you just you just forget that, about that's it. it. That's I, exactly it. I found myself multiple times where in my hand, it's like, oh, I'd love to be able to play a seven because I can beat everything else at the table. And you go seven, and you're like, that card's already been played. And yep. then you look, and then you have to spend that like like next thirty seconds going, oh, what what's the next best thing I have? Because that seven's already been played in this color, and I could drop it to a three, but that's not strong enough for what I want. And well, I mean, in the I think it was the last round that we played, I literally said I've been blocked out from both winning and losing the round, and it's because I didn't have colors that hadn't already been played, and I didn't have numbers that would work in that way. Yeah. Does that impact your choices for what you play early on? So are you trying to keep a vary variation of a number of cards to have choices or are you too focused on trying to get the wins or the gold cards? I My, oh, sorry. You go. I was going to say, I think the deck is too random to just try and like, try and skew it one way as one person. You do really have to play off the person you're playing with. And because obviously, like any trick taking game in teams, you can't discuss what each other have. It yeah. just means that you're left basically trying to figure out what you're doing and your strategy doesn't really come into play until I think maybe like mid end of the round. Mm. So I, I found initially I preferred three over four by players. After we started playing four and got a fair way in, I was like, no, nah, four is the way. Um, I found personally my strategy was to actually not even necessarily worry about the gold and the thing unless I was like last. Turn order matters so Turn order much. is so critical. Otherwise, I was just trying to dump cards from my hand that didn't match a color. Yeah. I think I was trying to make it so I could close out a game by not being able to play anything. Yeah. Well, I think we, we talked about it briefly. Second player feels like you don't have a lot of choices, mm. but second player sets the tempo mm. for what the third and the fourth player are going to do because you get your the, the opposition and then your teammate as the yeah. final card, which means you can set up, all right, is my teammate going for the loss? Is my teammate going for the win? And what is that third player going to do? Because if that third player takes the win, i.e. they have to play a higher card than you, you will then... Um, that your teammate will probably lose. But if that third player takes the loss, that means you're going first in the next That's round. It. Mm. Setting up those plays is almost as big as winning the plays. Because what we saw a few times is first player would play a 10, second player would play a one. And it literally then comes down to the third and fourth player to decide which way are we Who, going to swing Because the there's top. previous rounds where it'd be like 10, 8, 8. And then it's like, well, the third player can win like a free gold card at high. But if you shut it down early and play that one or two second player, then it becomes the gold you're winning is a one and you either play a gold or you match a 10. So you're getting rid of high and low cards mm. and, and they're the most valuable, your high and your low cards. Having those choices available to you at the very start, right? You have 11 cards that you then have to judge. How am I going to bid based on these leftover cards? To go, all right, I, I think maybe I have enough to influence the game. There was one round where I went, I have nothing in the middle. I have three nines, a couple of tens, and a bunch of ones and twos. Mm. I can maybe win some gold cards early, but if we're leading the tricks, then someone else is going to copy me and take that gold away from me. 
is that hand then strong enough to win enough tricks? And we got very close, but we didn't pull it out. Yes, no. But going back to what Jimmy said, strategy for me was definitely the lower bid card I had, the earlier I was trying to get rid of multiple sets. So if I if we bid three to win overall, I was trying to get rid of colors from my hand early to shut the game down, because even if we don't win the first two rounds, winning three is relatively easy. When we got to four or five bids, I'd wait you know, a round or two to wait to see how many wins we already get and then start shutting out my cards. Because it came down to both times. I think the last two games we played, I wasn't able to play because I was playing third with two colors left in hand. But you still have the option to if you've won gold cards and that's super Correct. important. I if think you, gold, if you want the round to keep going. It, yeah. It's almost a disadvantage to be the very first player, as much as you get set like the first bid, you've got very little chance if you have those low cards of actually getting gold early mm. because you'll most often be tied by yeah. someone to oh, someone else will play you. a one or something. You're better off playing high. One thing, one thing I just ran into too much is the first player is like there were a couple instances like for most of the rounds I had like a few tens in hand and so I was like oh cool this these are probably an easy two or three sets that I can win. Yeah. There were just too many times and. Like being the first player, like sometimes your only option is to do that high 10 because no one's getting higher than it. They can only be like the last person to play a 10. But then, you know, Jimmy would come through and be like, well, I can't let this happen. Ten. Two on a gold. And I'm just like, that's literally a wasted card. Yeah. And it's so frustrating. But it also takes a gold away from them. Yeah. So it's just it, obviously if I'd known that was going to happen I would have played a lower card because no, then it. I'd get the gold for it but it only happened because you played the 10 yeah I yeah. know yeah. Um, self-fulfilling prophecy comparing <laughs> it at 3 and 4 players so at 3 players you remove all the 10s so there is only 1 to 9 and you also remove an entire suit so there are only 4 suits and there's 1 more suit than there are the number I, of players I didn't know that um, yeah. so you your choices become a little bit less but also because there's 3 players that second player then becomes a whole lot harder to balance things out. I think you said it like when we were playing it too. It sucks being the second player. Mm. You're setting the tempo, but you can also easily get stuck being permanently second player, which means you're not getting points. You're not getting gold, so you're stuck there. I think I like how the game makes the first player as well. So because it is dependent on who loses the set, it means you have to actively choose to not win, and not everybody is going to choose to do that. Yeah. Um, it does kind of get a little bit goat when you have like a team where one person has the set winning cards and one person has the set losing cards, because then they're the ones collecting the gold and losing the sets so that they're constantly going first. But then the thing is, is that their teammate is going third, and then it's at the mercy of whoever's going last. So it's always like being pushed and pulled to different sides of the table, and there's no one person that can stay first player or stay last player, which is arguably the most valuable I position. I felt to like that happened more in a three-player game because you play super high and someone's just like, I'll save my cards for a win next time or I'll match it. And it's when, which one of you two were in the middle for the most part? Did you feel like you were stuck in the middle on most of that three-player game? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. So I, on that, I found it far easier to count cards in a three-player game and then figure out the right time to strike. Well, well you've got one less suit. One so less suit, easier to four count. less cards because there's no tens. Mm. Um, you can very easily start going, all right, they've played this, they've played this. Like your, your What you've got to count is less, and then you've got the ability to strike at the right time and swing the game at the right uh, time. I found I counted more of the high cards in the, ten, in the four-player game because it's just like, well, they're the win cards. So like, they're the ones that you're going to play to try and secure the win, whereas the lower ones, you're trying to get gold, typically. I, typically. I counted suits more than I counted cards in the game. So when mm -hmm. I saw like white cards weren't played as much and I wanted the round to end early, I was trying to like save my white cards up in my hand because then I'd know other people would play them and I wouldn't be able to play. In one of the games towards the end, I think I still had four white cards in hand. I, I had was... four at the end yeah. of the last one just then, yeah. but then I had to play it yeah. and that ended up. How do you feel about the the intro optional variant of everyone starting with a zero gold card? I think it helps. Like, I think we didn't use the trump to win sets when it was a zero, but then it's also a lot easier to sort of give it away to change up the bid 
that's that what it was have? used for more in my opinion. Like, I did use it once to win, but for the most part it was, I've bid four. I have a freebie to change it to five. I, I, I love that it's included because it's a really great way to teach people that mm. without taking away the points that they would be acquiring. I, you need people to learn the value of that without suffering from what, like, like having a bad thing taken away or a good thing taken away from them mm. by doing that. So I think yeah. it's a great, great intro tool. I think, yeah, 100% intro tool because you lo learn... Losing gold isn't the worst thing that could happen. Like, okay, yeah, we spent ones and twos like it was freaking nothing in that. Like it was candy. Like it was candy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, I 100% agree. Like the zero is good for introducing and making it so you don't want to just hold your gold, you will use it. I preferred it without. 100%. I, I, thought, I, I thought it was much so much better. I preferred how the game played when we didn't have the zeros. Your opening choices are so much more impactful. Yeah. yeah, like choosing to lose a set so you can get gold becomes that much more of an important decision. Yeah. Like you could easily just, like when we were playing, when we were playing with the zeros where everybody had one, I just remember thinking, <sighs> Right, yeah. towards the end of yeah. the game. That's it, like, why bother? Like, that 10 is actually not really as strong as it should be. Yeah. Because, it's because of the zero. Everyone one. has a yeah. 12th card in hand that's mm. an insta win. Like, yeah. I, I understand the idea of it being there to play, and if I was playing with people who weren't so board game savvy or anything like that, I would definitely just keep it included until they decided to take it out of the game. Mm. But sitting down with most other people, I would take, you know, like, one game through, here's a zero, and then remove it from then on. I would even, I would even argue that, like, we probably could have done it where we'd had the zeros in for one round after that first round went okay remove the zeros like i think you only need them for a round to understand how they're used and then i after guess that, yeah, it's just a balanced thing of of do you play the full the, the, the full round yeah i um, think callum's right it depends on who you're playing it with. was so much more enjoyable without the zero because yeah. as beck said knowing that oh i'm gonna play the center oh, there's zero there's zero if they really don't want us to win this we aren't going to win this yeah so, two uh, final questions what do you think of the art I really like That's it. That's great. It's it's different enough that I know when I had them in my hand, like if you slide them all like over the top of each other, even the hands are slightly different. So it's like you notice just little things like that. Because most of the time, that's how the cards are in my hand. I'm not going to look at the main art. But I the art those. is varied enough that it, nothing looks the same. I'll always goat something that is colorblind friendly. So the fact that all of the different colors have a different symbol associated with it so that if you aren't good with colors, <coughs> Jimmy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but it, all the art is slightly different. More curves here, more lines there, yeah. more triangles here. Like everything is different enough. I love the fact that there's little suns um, to count the number of points on the gold cards. <laughs> See, to me, the gold cards are actually the ones I don't like. You want them to be gold plated? No, no, no. It's not because they're not gold plated. The reason I like, I, I don't know what is it, it is. Is it because they're not double ended? Because these ones you can hold either way and it kind of works. And no, then these no, ones that, you don't. it's more like I look at it and it's like, oh, eight, eight points. No, it's three points. I've got to so I have to have to do a second look. And that's just a me thing. That's not yeah. the game so, being bad. It's just me. I, I did notice that at first as well as I was like, oh, I get eight points for that. It's like, oh, wait, no. no. Every time Tom went to score, he's like, well, this, and it's like, oh, yeah, cool. I've got the doubling part, then I add the total number of the thing. And it's just like, that's why I got to that number. Not because I'm trying to cheat, yeah. you know, but because I'm dumb. I'm dumb. So. Would you prefer to play this at three or four players? I would probably only want to play it at four players. I think when it's four players, you have a teammate. You don't really get stuck in a position where you're just going to lose and you just have to live with that. So if someone was like, do you want to play Orem? We only have three players. I'd be like, nah, I'm good. I'd pick four just because the extra little bit of variation, as long as there's no score, uh, zero cards, mm. that would be my ideal. They're two completely different games. I can't say I prefer one over another, as we discussed earlier. If I'm sitting down at a pub having a few drinks, three players. I'm not going to want to pull it out with four players because there's a little bit too much concentration for that. If I sit down and want a short, you know, half hour, semi like intricate game on, I'm going to think about what I'm doing, four players, 30 minutes. It's a right kind of crunchy. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I personally think I prefer it at three. I just like the the way the game flows and moves at three a little bit more. Mm. Four seems to be very this, 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 this. And that's not a bad thing because there are still choices within that. Three just felt a little bit more random, which I like in a trick-taking yeah, game. So with all that in mind, where would you put it on our list? 
if Jimmy could grab that list there for us. <laughs> uh, this is our Nerds of the West ranking list. We rank games not based on 1 to 10, because objectively Where trying to say, uh, put it out in the front at the moment. Uh, we can't say for sure if one game is better than another, but just if given the opportunity, what we personally would prefer to play. So if we grab this out and put it on the table for everyone to see, we currently have Aurum sitting here between Unfathomable and Wingspan Asia Jewel. Now that I have played it at four players, I think it goes a bit higher for me. I would put this above Hollywood 1947. I think it's a great team game and a great game that you can pull out for a um, different number of players, which is a really strong selling point for me, especially at this price, like 15 to $25 very hard game to beat there's just more in-depth games up above that i would personally prefer to play um, if you're talking full cooperative i definitely prefer too many cooks and it's interesting you say that because i would prefer this over too many cooks and it's because too many cooks is cooperative with absolutely zero communication and while this is exactly the same there is strategy based on that and it is not entirely random too many cooks sometimes makes me incredibly angry so i would probably play this over that fair I see haven't played much of anything in this area where Aurum is currently sitting in the middle. But if you're saying too many cooks is like no communication. It's not no communication. You can only say yes or no. Yeah, that sounds very similar to what's that um the mall exploration game magic maze. Allowed, yeah. magic, it sounds similar to magic maze. Is that how you guys would rate it? It's not as chaotic not. as that. Because I hate magic maze. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like, if that's similar to Magic Maze, I think I'd prefer to play Aurum over that, but I haven't played the other games that are above it, so I can't... Can't say for sure, yeah. but yeah. If you're totally lost, you're allowed to give it an out of 10 in a rough position, but... Look, I'd give it a... I'd happily pull that out and play that with people. I'd say it's, uh, you know, six, seven, like around that for me. I, I'm, I'm comparing to like the stuff I have played, like I've played Star Realms, I've played Dune Imperium. I've done too many cooks, and I agree with Beck. I actually would rather play this over too many cooks, and I like Fight the Blight. And um, yeah, yeah, I'd probably hang it around Fight the Blight for me to be honest. Easy. I'm going to move it up just a little bit, but the main point is at the end of this year we are going to re-rank this entire list. Everyone at Nerds will rank every single game based on where they want to put it uh, and every game will get re-ranked and reordered. so if you want to see that we will do that live twitch.tv slash nerds of the west sometime in December otherwise you can always catch our content on YouTube later on we have been nerds of the west we have a Callum hey we have a Jimmy hey. we have a Beck hi and we will catch you next time see ya <laughs> <laughs>